This shot is pretty simple, pretty quick, and yet there were 25 different sounds added on top of the dialogue to get this final result. So let's go through that process of using sound effects and Foley to build a rich soundscape. I like to start by trying to make things sound realistic. We can re-record every single footstep, carefully replicating the surface that they were walking on. When someone drops a metal gun on the ground, we need a metallic scraping sound. These days, I force myself to go out and record the sound effects before looking online for pre-recorded sound effects because that way I can try different materials and perform it with a lot more precision than just finding something online and saying, yeah, that's good enough. Doing this can take up as much time as you give it. So I can totally see why bigger productions employ someone just to work on the sound. But of course, we don't necessarily have to re-record every sound from the shoot. For this shot, we had enough time on set to record the running which I was then able to combine with the lavalier sound of heavy breathing. Getting those sounds on the day did save me a bunch of time in post, but I should mention that most of the time we really can't spend our precious time on set recording a bunch of sound effects that we could quite easily just recreate later. Now, looking at our entire project, we can do our typical EQ and compression for the dialogue, which is a separate topic for another video. But a simple way to make things more realistic is to have consistent ambience throughout the scene. For example, in this sequence, we've got a pause in the dialogue, which gives us a silent gap that sounds very unnatural. I'm going to kill you like you killed my brother. Try it, mate. Try it. So we grab our 60 seconds of ambient recording or room tone that we captured on set and use it to fill in any silences. Here's the result, which makes everything more seamless. I'm gonna kill you like you killed my brother. Try it, mate. Try it. So once we've cut out all of the unwanted sounds and replaced them with ambience, and we've dropped in all of our recorded sound effects, we should have a pretty strong foundation. And this brings us on to our next stage. We started with realism, but we don't have to be limited by that. We can still be artistic. So we listen to the whole mix and think of the moments that could be bigger or moments that could benefit from extra sounds. It could mean recording chopping wood in the distance to put some weight behind a gunshot sound and then finding a recording of thunder to use afterwards as if the shot is echoing around the neighborhood. We have creative license to use anything that could contribute to the tone of the scene, like a dog barking or music playing from someone's phone. We might decide that we need more intensity, like in this shot. Now here's the sound that we recorded on set, so it's 100% realistic. And then we drop in a bunch of the scraping footstep sounds that we recorded. Next, the clothes shuffling around for each kick, along with the kick sounds from a range of different impact recordings. It's quite a big difference from what actually happened on set, but it's what the scene called for. And so, after spending plenty of time recording and layering all of our sounds, we can enter the final stage of post-production sound. Mixing all of the elements together, making it balanced. Now, like all aspects of filmmaking, there are no rules about how loud your sound effects should be or how quiet your music should be. But here are a couple of common problems that people tend to run into. Number one, is there any point where the audio meters go into the red? above zero dB. If that happens, we need to reduce the volume or use more compression. Number two, are there any sounds that jump out at you that are distractingly loud? 
I had to reduce the volume on the sound of these coins because they weren't important to the story and were just distracting from the dialogue, which was more important in this scene. Now, there's plenty of other stuff like panning, EQ and reverb, but we'll look at those another time. Because for me, 90% of the work is recording the sounds and layering them together. Everything beyond that is kind of just tweaking. Now, the last thing to do is to make the overall levels consistent. So you can watch the entire film without adjusting the volume on your speakers before then testing it on a few different devices with different speakers to make sure it sounds okay everywhere. Now, all of this might sound like a lot of work, but for me, it's honestly one of my favorite parts of the entire filmmaking process because it's one of the rare things that you can spend a few hours on and instantly see a decent improvement pretty much every time. If it goes well, the audience won't even notice the sound, but we get to have the kind of amazing experience of hearing the before and afters and seeing just how much of a difference it makes. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week.